I was born as a filmmaker, traveling around the world. I've seen a lot. The more I'd been in contact with the people from other culture, the more I felt that the world was complex and there was no black and white. Hey, Mark. Cinema is a fantastic tool to explore that complexity, to try to understand what's happening. Sicario is an exploration of that complexity. When I read Sicario for the first time, I thought that it was one of the strongest and most powerful screenplay that I ever read. It's a visual art, and it begins and ends with the photography and him making his own interpretation of the scenes. Action! And then you just have layers upon layers upon layers of interpretation that magnify the effect. Sicario is a journey through darkness and through the darkest side of human beings about how far should we go as a society to protect ourselves. You know what the beauty is of you being so beat to a pulp? Because no one's gonna notice a few more scratches. I would love the audience to feel that what they are seeing in the screens feels as real as possible. FBI! That's the way I will approach location. That's the way I will approach violence. That's the way I will approach action as well. I want to create cinematic moments that will have a freshness to it. There's, of course, our sequences in the movie that will be beautiful and strong challenges. As a filmmaker, it's gonna be exciting and at the same time, I think it's deeply stressful. The visuals are not just kind of designed overnight. I like to start off with a general conversation about a script, you know, with a director, and then Denny will get a lot of images from all sorts of different places. So I started doing a collage of every set or every mood or ideas for some of the scenes. The uh, drug war is well documented. There's some really gritty, disgusting stuff that happens over there. Patrice Vermette and René April, my costume designer and production designer, they are making massive research for uh, Sicario, like if we were doing a documentary. When we would draw visual reference from photographs or from Patrice's work, certain things that really hit the mood of the film were very influential. In this case, I brought a lot of work by Alex Webb. Uh, Alex Webb had actually shot a whole series of pictures about this subject in, in Mexico and on the border uh, in the 80s. I thought his sense of composition and use of color is pretty amazing. Roger brought in the idea of Alex Webb and the way that the light works on the character and the colors, there's like light and then there's darkness. It's kind of like watching a photograph develop in the chemical bath as you start to see the mood of the film emerge through that process. Denise films are a constantly evolving animal, and the storyboards are only a piece of the puzzle. We wanted to introduce Kate in a, some kind of graphic way and introduce what's happening, so we had storyboarded that and those very specific shots for that whole sequence inside the SWAT vehicle. And so with Kate's character, you begin with that very first scene with just her eye. And there's immediately a contrast between light and dark. And that was a moment that I could see a, a twinkle in Denis's eyes as the film was really coming into, started to come into focus for him. Denis wanted this sense of the light. And there's no way you could do it in the real SWAT vehicle. So Patrice built a kind of very rudimentary box set because basically you don't see anything of the inside anyway. So it's just a wooden shape. And we put it on a turntable and I had a lamp on a crane so you could manipulate it to get those kind of shafts of light coming through the window. It's completely unreal, but it's just part of that introduction of the character and the you know, expressive way of getting that light in the dark. It's metaphorical for what's our perception of uh, what's good and, and not.
For Sicario, the idea was to be as authentic as possible, to feel that we are very, very close to reality. And with uh, Roger Deakins and Patrice Verved, my production designer and cinematographer, we aim for that kind of authenticity. We looked at where the actual action takes place with Roger and Denis and the producers. And then we looked around New Mexico, Albuquerque area to see if it was a possible match. For Sicario, we choose to uh, shoot in New Mexico. I need landscapes that will have a relationship with Horizon. I want the characters to uh, be lost in, in emptiness and landscapes that will be almost a character in the film. The border of Mexico and the United States for me is, it says a lot of things about our world today. This idea that just beside uh, the biggest democracy of the world, a frisbee away, you know, you have this chaos, a place where the laws are not um, uh, followed anymore. Unbelievable. That's what happens when you chop the head off a chicken. Yeah. I need those helicopter shots because I wanted the audience to understand the geography, understand the power of that landscape, understand the geography of the action, and also the absurdity of seeing a landscape that is the same but is divided just by a line. It's a very uh, powerful image. Alejandro's journey after the tunnel with uh, Silvio. We storyboarded not knowing exactly where things would take place. We were based in Albuquerque, and it was quite a strong monsoonal season that year. So we ended up with all these kind of amazing skies that we hadn't expected. Silvio's police car going into the background, the production manager, somebody said uh, there was um, a weather alert and that we had to wrap. Denis had this idea that there was an emotional beat in the film that he wanted to hit. And they found a real thunderstorm to drive into, which is spectacular and completely unpredictable. And that was just a shot we did before everybody wrapped, where with a bolt of lightning going straight down that gives the landscape this character. Roll sound. We're outdoors and with a lot of sunshine. So in this movie, Roger and Denny have created a world where, you know, even in the sunshine, bad things happen. This desert is inspiring, fantastic, and tough, rough on the body. Everybody are tired right now. I'm very tired right now because we spent days on the harsh conditions with the light is very raw. I said to Roger, how can we find a way to embrace it instead of fighting it? The brutality of that sun and bring our characters like Silhouette, this arch sun, and then Roger totally agree and love the idea. You're actually dealing with the real world, a, a real subject. I try and create a kind of naturalism so you feel you're in the real world in some way, even when it's stylized. I think you really want the audience to connect with it in the sense that yeah, it feels like that is something that could and is happening. I like the idea that we will do a movie with a lot of contrast and this idea of going in the total opposite direction and that the night will be deep dark. Like, you'll need almost a knife to see in the night. We embrace that contrast. The tunnel sequence had a distinct set of challenges to it because it was from dusk to night. As you got into the tunnel more deeply, I think it really became a transition of just light to dark. It was pitch black. Even when we was at the Arroyo, it was in the outside of the tunnels, we were shooting in darkness, and there was one little bit of light just to kind of see stuff. All the cars weren't allowed to have headlights on. Darkness. All this is taking place at night, and all the characters have to work wear these image enhancers of one shape or another so they can see. So you can't really shoot it in an objective way with a kind of Hollywood moonlight effect because that doesn't make any sense at all because if you, the audience, can see it, then the characters can see it, so why are they wearing all these silly things? There's an old sequence that is shot in total darkness, but when I say total darkness, I mean we were shooting in deep dark because we were using a thermal camera and an infrared camera, and those cameras were 
obviously able to see in, in deep night. We couldn't just do it with standard night vision. That would all look too samey. So then we started experimenting with infrared and found this company, FLIR, who had this really fantastic infrared camera that we could actually follow the footprints down the stairs and stuff, which was great. Um, the prop man actually uh, heated up his boots and walked down in front of us as we did that shot. The night vision did represent different characters, where Kate was, would look at Reggie in her green night vision, and, and Alejandro had the dark uh, infrared vision. Basically, it's like going scuba diving in the desert, you know, and uh, in the total darkness. And that brought the tension that I was looking for uh, in this specific sequence. There's this idea of my main character going into Mexico and having a first glimpse at the Juarez, the chaos of Juarez. And that, I felt, had a strong cinematic potential. We visited Juarez, which is a very scary place right now. You could tell that it was a city that had suffered an enormous amount of damage due to the cartels. I remember asking the Federales when we went down there, what's the good part of town and what's the bad part of town? They said, the good part of town is where they're not killing anyone. There's not possible to shoot in Juarez because it was too much violence. But it was very, very, very important for Patrice, Roger, and I to shoot in Mexico because I wanted to embrace that culture. I wanted to be close to, to feel the, the reality of this culture. Mexico City is such a huge city that on its outskirts, it's very similar to uh, what we can find in, uh, in Juarez. There's a, a fair amount of use of, of different kind of colors in the film that were inspired by what we can see when we arrive in Mexico. The use of those bright colors and this contrast of the, this joy coming from the color and the violence in the country was uh, so striking. The U.S. Uh, side is very beige, it's very uh, corporate look. When you go to Mexico, it's a bit more of a free-for-all, anarchy, uh, chaos. And when there's something that um, we try to exploit in the, in the movie, in the design. You hear that? Those aren't firecrackers. There's a vicious drive into Juarez. One of the very first questions that we had beginning to storyboards was what the pacing and what the feeling was going to be. Spotter vehicle, left lane, left lane. Spotter vehicle, nine o'clock. Roger is so strong as a visual storyteller so that when we're working on the framing of shots, the ways that the camera will move, we would discuss the pace from frenetic action through Juarez, through driving trucks, through seeing buildings whip past, and so catching pieces of it, an awareness of how the camera is also a character, and staying with Kate, and that really brings you into the action through a character's perspective. And then we would get to this, you know, to being stuck. When you're stuck, you can't really move around. Get your service weapon out. There's an incredible sequence as they're coming back over across the border. It all happens in about 90 seconds on screen. Months and months of planning and building and design. It was impossible to shoot uh, on the bridge of the Americas where the action will take place for obvious security reasons. Since 9-11, it's not possible anymore to shoot on those bridges. Roger Deakins and Patrice and Denis and everyone putting our heads together and figuring out how to shoot this in sort of an epic, intense way, which is the way it's written. It's a pivot in a story, in Kate's journey, how her character is being transformed by, by what's happening. That's the main set that needed to be, you know, it was specific. It needed to be that and, and nothing else. The real place is on the U.S. side. There's 14 booths, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of traffic. The traffic doesn't move. We realized that, you know, economically, we could never build that. Patrice sent me a drawing of how he envisioned the border crossing. I think he really distilled what was necessary for the shot, but create that claustrophobic and trapped feeling. That is the first beat before going back to United States, is that toll booth. The fact that there's border agents rushing into the scene, so those booths are the excuse for those agents to, to rush into the scene. And it's also the excuse for, 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 for the traffic to slow down. We built a replica of the border crossing in El Paso, complete with the Bridge of Americas, going over that looks as if you're there. We laid tarmac and then discerning what would be visual effects and what would be real and creating the toll booths and then our amazing painters with striping and aging and oil stains and I mean, it's just, it takes so many levels to make it look real. But then achieving it was a whole other issue. The 
hardest scene in the whole film was the shootout at the border post when they're coming back from Mexico. I'm deeply inspired and excited to work with Roger. The only way to work with such a master is to try to flirt with disaster. And I want uh, Roger to be deeply inspired. He's shooting that way and this way, you know, all this different action. So that was something we, we storyboarded in quite considerable detail. And so much of it was played from Emily's point of view and she's sitting in the back of a car. It's really important you build up at the beginning, like who's the bad guy and who's not. And you know, there's all the civilians in between, you know, the two parties. And the bridge to camera was fairly static for quite a bit of that. It comes down to being locked in a place where you are unable to move. And staying with Kate, you're only able to see what you, you can. Get out of the car. So it's like that confusion. And then when, you know, the confrontation and the, and the guys in the, the, they get shot, you're in, the camera can cut, justifiably come in to see it more clearly and, and see the horror of what's happening. The action that is in here is so intense and so real for the characters in the moment that I think it's going to knock the audience back because it's just, it's so real, it's frightening. 